the fact we're still a band this far into it. When we started, we had no idea no. we'd be doing this forever, like opening for some of the bands and playing in some of the bigger rooms that we play. It's still a trip to us. It hasn't lost on us that yeah. we're in the game still for being a, a loud, aggressive, instrumental, repetitive rock band. Like there, that's, that's, is mind blowing to us that we're still around. It was a natural growth for us. So I, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't interfere at all. Like you need to find, you need to take the missteps. Every time you fuck up, it's an opportunity to grow. So in each studio session is an opportunity to grow. Each tour, you learn how to become better musician, a better songwriter, a better bandmate, to listen more to others and, you know, play better with your bandmates. So I think we've have that under our wings now, which we didn't have initially.
just for fun, we had a drive at late at night and we popped on the demo that Mike and I were on with the Russian circles in 2005, four, four, yeah. 2004. And just hearing that, you can still hear it's us, but we've evolved yeah. drastically since then. Or we never would have written the songs the same way. In a yeah. cool way, you grow and you get more influences and we've developed more interest and skills and other ways of playing and having Brian in the band is, yeah. changes the sonic spectrum of things. So it was fun to listen to that. And like Dave said, the seeds were there for who we are. I think there's a thing where, you know, after being a band for as long as we have and putting out as many records where you still want things to be really exciting and to feel fresh and new, but we also aren't interested in deviating from being bass and drums and guitar. And we all have varying musical interests, but we all still have a vision for what a good Russian Circles record sounds like. This record was a deviation only in the sense that we kind of figured out a new process of writing and working together that I think was streamlined and, and allowed us to put things under a magnifying glass. Really sort of hear the songs develop incrementally instead of, you know, being in the roaring space of the practice room. Like, brutal. <laughs> absolutely. Our old demos were pretty much a digital version of putting a boo box in the middle of the practice space huh. and pushing the red button. And then you could get it back, and like Dave said, it's just a brick of like chaos. Like, well, it's like a lot of high your symbols sound levels. great. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. we can do every one, <laughs> and that's cool. So, like this time, we had we we'd write songs start to finish with intention, and we knew we couldn't get together anytime soon. So we work on full songs, not just riffs. Yeah. Where most of the other records were just like riff ideas, and like gluing them together any way we can. Whereas this is more so focused on a song by song basis, not just riffs. Writing has gotten, I think, easier over the course of like the last three years, just solely because I have an electric kit at home and Brian's got a whole little like beat laboratory upstairs in his house and yeah. Mike's the same. And we're just, you know, we can feed ideas easier because they sound really good, you know, if they're recorded at home. We used to like have everyone fly in and then that was like nerve wracking because it's like, if nothing creative came out in a day, we're like, oh, we just wasted a day. We were able to workshop independently now. Yeah, like, no, absolutely. It'd be cool to send off a song and like then you hear your other members' contributions. And yeah. to me, that's the most exciting part is hearing what what these guys do. Because I'm already sick of my shit. Like, okay, I know I this works. Yeah. But once I hear the contributions, like, oh fuck, this is what it sounds like. Oh, this is Russian circles. Yeah. It's not just one dimension. It, it starts getting more dimensions with their contributions. So that's really exciting part of the process.
don't even think of ourselves as instrumental. It, it, there's some, yeah. Instrumental music isn't a genre. Most of our favorite bands are instrumental. Like front rock music in the 70s was instrumental, but no one calls it. Some, most of it was, some was, but you don't say it's instrumental music. So we happen to be instrumental. We're very different than a lot of the other instrumental bands that we pull from, you know. So much vocal forward music is about identifying or, or relating to a, a persona that's being projected at you. And, and more and more I find that as a handicap rather as an asset to a lot of music where it's just like someone starts singing at me. It's like, ah, I don't think I like this person, <laughs> you know? And it's like, once they get out of the equation and it's just the notes and the melody and the beat, it's just a lot easier to, oh good, there's not someone like dumping their poetry on me right now. It's just, it's just music. When you put out a record every two to three years, it's like, okay, the next two to three years of my life are gonna be dedicated to these things. And so you become super emotionally invested in every little idea you come up with. So much of being in a band is being willing to compromise and like, if an idea doesn't work in the group, you know, being okay to like sacrifice that for the greater good. For, for some of the albums, because it was written way differently and we tried new things like, well, what if Brian and I harmonized more on like baritone and, and guitar? And we tried that on the song, Last meal. Last meal. Yeah. Well, like, initially that was like just us doing a like, guitar fest together, and like you know what, this is this isn't working in the studio. We need bass here. So like, Brian pivoted to bass at that point because our initial idea for the song wasn't working. It works great in the studio world, where like a digital studio where you're composing these songs in a box, but when you're in a proper studio space and hearing all the instruments together, it didn't work. So we had to re-examine that. And that was a good example of okay, let's. How do we change a song to make it yeah. flow better? Yeah. There was never like much of a discussion about it. You know, like we agree on what we what the song should sound like, and we don't overthink it too much. Expectations too. It's like uh, we want to be at this level. Like we want to be playing like in front of fifteen hundred people. It's like we never even talked about that. We well, just want to like play yeah. and, and have fun. And if it works out, it works out. I'm, I'm just thankful people still come out. And yeah. They still care. <laughs> Instead of like, how do we get bigger? It's like, man, I can't believe they're still here. Yeah. And there's some more people. <laughs> like, totally. It's, it's a, a total luxury and a gift to be able to do this. So we're not complaining at all, at any means. We're, we're happy campers.
grew up going to shows, you know, like you experience the band live and on some level you're like, that is what the band is. Like it's the live entity that I see is the band. And even though we have used technology to go further into writing and composing, like in the box of a laptop, like the experience is still meant to be like three people in a room with amps projecting sound. Like music's supposed to be a communal experiential thing. So if it's just something that exists on record, it just, that, that to me, that seems weird. Like it has to have an incarnation in the real world where it's people interacting. Sound environments to me aren't nearly as interesting as like something that sounds like real life human beings making music. Live is an environment where you can't go turn down the volume if you're in the crowd. You have to like succumb to all the noise that's hitting you. And everyone's brains are the same. They're all synced in together. And it's a really powerful experience, a spiritual experience. And that is something we don't overthink or talk about too much, but just try to sound the best we can individually and collectively as a unit. Put on a good show, as simple as that. Young Mike would be stoked that I'm able to grow a beard, kind of. He's like, wow. That's exactly what I was going to wow. say. Wow. <laughs> like, look at you, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you almost, you have like one third of a beard. Like, keep going. By the time you're 50, you'll have a full beard. So I'd be stoked about that. I'd be stoked I'm not totally bald yet. Um, I'd be like, don't cut it. Just keep going. <laughs>